Hello everyone, today I'm going to show you how to create this drawing and you only need a few markers to recreate it. This video is kindly sponsored by Karen Markers so I'm going to use those. You can use water soluble markers, you can use watercolors, whatever you want or have at home to recreate this piece but I really recommend checking out Karen Markers and giving them a try because I have worked with them a bunch of times now. I actually reached out to them on asking them if they want to collaborate because I just love them so much and they're so much fun to use so let's get started with the video. At first we're going to light some candles for the ambiance and to get a little bit cozy. I'm very cozy now. So cozy. Now we get our paper and let's get started with the sketch. Don't worry, I've got a sketch for you that you can screenshot and copy. So here I'm just figuring out how I wanted to do the sketch. Very sped up because this is always a little bit of a process even though I already had an idea going on in my head and a few pictures that I got inspired by. So I like to combine a mixture of different things. Here you can see the sketch. You can pause here, download this, follow along if you want to or copy the sketch and now we're getting out our markers and like I said I'm using Karen markers you can use all kinds of markers you could even use watercolors for this and I'm swatching my colors and I'm going on intense mode here because I swatched them three times eliminating more colors each time and this is the color scheme that I ended up with and now we're going to start to color in our enchanted forest and if you don't know that about me I really love nature and forests and I really mean that because when I was a child I used to walk in the forest to just calm down and so today I like to go there still and just when I feel anxious or stressed I go outside and it helps me so much and I think I always see something that's inspiring and magical when I'm in nature and so I want to make my own little world here and I started to color in the background with a pretty dark color so we're gonna have a lot of contrast in this piece and then here I start to blend these colors a little bit. I picked a lighter color now and I'm blending those into each other and you can still kind of see the lines and I really love the way that that looked. And I started to color in the trees and the most important thing with this piece honestly is the color scheme. I stuck to just oranges and purple tones so these kind of I think that's a Naples yellow kind of tone that I'm using here then a little bit of a darker one and yeah orange yellow tones and then the purple tones and that's it there's no green there's no blue there are a lot of colors that are not here and this is just a limited color palette and I think that makes it look so much more cohesive and I personally absolutely love the combination of orange and yellow tones with purple it gives a nice contrast it looks warm and fun and I just love it so much and you can see that at the top of this grass section I used the lighter tones and then I went into more of the purple tones and I just at first didn't really know what to do with where they interlock because they are very different colors but I fixed that later on by going over the purple with the orange a little bit and now you can see the bushes in the background and here you can see the section where I went over with the orange yellow tone and now we have this mid tone which is like a very warm brown tone and I really love that color. I think that's so much fun that you can get this color from mixing orange and purple. If you're doing this make sure to swatch your colors first and see how they mix because it might look differently depending on the supplies that you use but even if it looks differently have fun with this art piece that's the main thing here. 
just color it in the way that you want it to. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can see here I'm using a darker purple in the foreground. Then I'm going back with the trees and giving them a little bit of texture. I was really experimenting a lot with stylizing them here and I'm fairly happy with how they turned out. You can see here that I blended them a little bit more and I was using Clairefontaine watercolor paper for this and I found that it worked really well because it can handle a lot of the markers. So if you are using water-based markers or watercolor markers or even the same ones that I'm using here, then watercolor paper works really well because it can handle a lot and you can do multiple layers. If you're using very thin paper, it's probably not going to be as fun as if you have very good paper that can handle a lot of water. But again, we're here to have fun, not to create a perfect piece. So whatever you have at home, make use of it and create something fun. So here you can see that I was blending the colors by just putting them together and they were sort of like kissing. <laughs> and I did that over and over and over and over again and uh, created this color here behind our little animal. And I really like the color that it made so this is a very good technique if you don't have all of the colors that you need or want an in-between color between the markers that you have here then you can use that and blend them like that so here you can see the forest no the tree that's the word <laughs> not a whole forest it's just one tree and part of a one tree not even an entire tree it's in the foreground and here you can see very well how I blended it and they just blend very, very nicely. I love that so much. The, pay, the markers are so juicy. I didn't even have to put water on them later on. I was just coloring that in and really liked the results that it gave me. So play around with your medium, whatever you have and learn more about it on the go. I really like to learn while I'm doing stuff and rarely ever practice a lot before I go into something. That's just me. I'm very impatient. I want to get started. I want to create something. And look at all those colors. This is so bright. I'm so happy with the color scheme here. I really have to do more with this color scheme because it just makes me so happy to look at. And it works really well together. And I'm so impressed with how the colors blended together. Honestly, I've said that, said that a bunch of times now, but I really love the way that that looks. Now with our animal. This is not a cat. It's not a bunny. I have no idea what it is, but it is very cute and we're gonna add in more details to make it come alive and let me know in the comments down below what you think this animal should be named because so far it does not have a name. Now we're adding the details to the tree and I again got inspired by the last unicorn scenes that I repainted or just copied to learn something and I really like the small details that all of the pieces on the last unicorn movie have in the trees and bushes and everything so I decided to do those details here as well. I put the orange down first then a blob of the purple and then again with the orange mixed the colors together a little bit so we get this nice blend. I think you can probably achieve a very good result with watercolors if you do this as well because then you can do the wet on wet technique where it blends a lot and that would be so much fun. Now our little animal is getting some eyes and a face and starting to come alive and I'm finalizing the piece with a fine liner pen and I just did the line work on the main sections not everywhere on the piece I just wanted to make sure that some sections would really pop so uh, our little still unnamed animal is 
starting to get a line art now and coming to life and now we're putting more details in the trees just a little bit I didn't want to overdo it and I decided that the tree was still a little bit too bright because I was using the brightest color I did not want this to be the focal point of the piece I wanted our animal that's sitting on the moon I wanted that to be the focal point so if that's the brightest part of the painting then the viewer will most likely be looking at that if everything else is a little bit darker so we have this contrast and we have our one main focal point and now I'm just using different fine liners to just add in a little bit more of the line art I was using a purple tone here because I did not want the section in the foreground to pop too much and I used the black when I wanted it to pop a little bit more and then adding in the last finishing details with a white gel pen and those are just the shimmers and spots and sparkles that we need in the end to create or finish off our little painting and we're finished so this is the finished piece i really hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did so please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel don't forget to check out karen markers they're linked in the description box below as well as my online shop where you can find my prints and stickers and my new gouache course in case you're interested i hope i can see you again next time goodbye a hand <laughs> said I'm very cozy. I'm very cozy. I'm very cozy. Coziness level 5 million. I'm very cozy. Very cozy. Very cozy. Cozy! Uh, okay. So cozy.